West Virginia loses another player to the transfer portal in basketball, and the coaching search is not going as fast as us fans would like it to. And Paul and I are going to talk about it here on this live edition of Who's from the Hills? What is going on out there, Mountaineer Nation and fellow basketball fans? Thank you for joining us on this live stream edition of Hoops from the Hills. Thanks for spending your Monday night with us here tonight. Some news came out today. Josiah Harris, a forward from the West Virginia basketball team, is now the third player from the team to enter the transfer portal following Kirk Creesa. I'm drawing a blank, Paul. Who's the first one? What? The first, first player, player to, in, to enter the transfer portal? Mm-hmm. Uh, you had, well, let's see. You got Josiah Harris, Kirk Creesa, and you put me on the spot here. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm having the same. I'm drawing a blank, too. Maybe somebody in the comments can help us out here. Who was the other guy? That, Seth Wilson. Seth Thank Wilson. You, pal. Yeah, Seth Wilson. <laughs> Seth Wilson was the first one. But anyway, today is the Josiah Harris Day. Um, we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to talk about the coaching search and how it's taking a little longer than many of us would like for new coach Darren DeVries to fill out his staff, uh, making some of us feel a little bit uncomfortable. But anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is talk a little bit about Josiah Harris. I'm going to share his announcement that he put up on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to read it for those of you who may not, because I know a lot of you may not have Twitter, so I'm going to read this for you. It says, Dear Mountaineer family, I am referring to you as family because that is what you are. When I left my family in Ohio two years ago, it was difficult, but I knew that the departure would not be forever and that it was necessary in order to grow from a boy to a man. That is what West Virginia has done for me. I walked through the doors as a boy, and I am both saddened and proud to say that I must leave a man, but a man who is truly blessed. Blessed to not only have a bachelor's degree, but in May, a master's degree, that will be permanently engraved with the West Virginia University insignia. And keep in mind, he's only a sophomore, folks. Now, with as much difficulty as it was to leave my Ohio family, it is with that same difficulty I must depart from my West Virginia family to grow in other ways. I will forever be grateful to all the coaches I've had, to the legendary Coach Huggins and his staff who laid the foundation of my collegiate basketball career, to Coach Eilert and his staff who taught me that even when the odds are stacked against you, to keep fighting with all your heart. To all the fans who inspired me with their unwavering spirit and support, I would like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart. To the future Mountaineer team, I know that I know that like a great phoenix, you are ready to rise again under the guidance of Coach DeVries. I want to thank you, West Virginia, for the love you have shown me, the wisdom you have instilled in me, and the memories that I will carry with me always. This is my home, and I look forward to returning time and time again with love in my heart and a pizza roll in my hand as a proud West Virginia University alumnus. This is not a goodbye. This is not. This is see you later. I am and will forever be a mountaineer. Just like a country road, life is long and winding, but no matter where that road takes me, my home away from home will always be here in West Virginia. Q Country Roads, Josiah Harris. So very heartfelt, long uh Goodbye there to Mountaineer Nation. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I got a little bit of, I almost got emotional when I read that earlier today. Uh, yeah. Josiah Harris is yeah. an absolute remarkable young man. The absolute epitome of what a, being a Mountaineer is all about, in my opinion. Just, you know, his time at West Virginia hasn't gone as he had hoped. And, you know, he's having to move on. Uh, or at least he's making the decision to move on. And hopefully for better opportunities ahead for him. Uh, so, Paul, what are your thoughts? Well, it's it's uh, it's one of those things where, as character, is exactly what you want. Uh, as um, an acad, you know, I mean, this is a kid that. Where where do you want to go next, JoJo? You want to go to Princeton? Yeah, <laughs> you can go. You know, um, you might be too qualified. You want to go to NYU and just not play ball anymore. Uh, you know, this, this kid is going to be successful in life, you know, and he, he, this basketball thing may or may not work out for him, but he's going to have one hell of a life, no matter what it is, you know? Absolutely. Uh, uh, just imagine, just imagine the possibilities for a guy that's able to graduate with a bachelor's degree as a freshman, you know, the reality of the situation is he's just not a big 12 player. He's not a big 12 starter anyway. And, and he is a, average backup so 
you know, that's the reality of this situation here. And, and unfortunately, in the two years that he was here, he just didn't grow quite enough. Good, good, you know, good to average on defense, good to average rebounder, uh, and, and then streaky everywhere else you can look at. So, you know, this was this thing where the coaches were probably really honest with him and said, listen, man, you know, because I think he, he's probably one of those kids that, like, as a super senior, would probably be pretty good. I can just see him growing mm-hmm. into like a really good player two, three down, right. years down the line. This staff doesn't have the space, scholarship availability to really give up on. I mean, I could see a way to keep a JoJo Harris for this year, but but man, they really need all the really good players they can get, and he's really just a casualty of the situation that coaches are in mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, if, if everything was everything as far as if they had, you know five or six players already on the roster that they could count on, he would be here next year. I have no doubt. Um, but, you know, behind the scenes, I, I was told a little bit more about this, but it's it's probably closer to mutual than anything, guys. So just remember that. Uh, and, and that's why there's no bad blood here. I think JoJo understands, and that's why he's moving on, and mm-hmm. it sucks, you know. But, yep. um, and, and like I said, at the end of the day, man, his game just wasn't really translating to me, you know. Uh, uh, maybe he needed more opportunities. You know, he's definitely got the brain for it. Six, seven, two, fifteen is a big kid. Uh, and I was really high on him coming into last year, and he kind of laid a little bit of an egg. So unfortunate. Yeah. Um, Which who didn't lay an egg last year? It was a tough year. Right. True. True. Yeah. His stats at West Virginia um, was he averaged five points a game. 4.1 rebounds a game and in 19.1 minutes a game off the bench this past this past season. Um, I, I don't have the career numbers pulled up, but that I got that from an article over at CousinsCorner.com, by the way, if you guys want to go check it out. Uh, one of the writers over there, Mr. Zachary Siegel, put out a, an article on, on the situation. But again, I mean, it's just uh, – like you said, Paul, he's going to he's going to – He's going to do big things in life, whether it's basketball or not, because he's just – he's extremely intelligent. He's he, he's a high-character individual, and I, he's just the type of person that, you know, is hell-bent to succeed, I think. Uh, from everything yeah. I've heard about him, he's got a good work ethic. and You know, he always does things the right way. So, I look forward to seeing what – you know, he's – I hold no ill will at all towards this young man. I hope he goes somewhere and does well, you know. Me too. hope he does really well. Me too. Um, hey, I yep. just got an inbox from Dusty DeVries. <laughs> Sorry. Cool. Yeah. No that was nice to see. Uh, Michael, I appreciate that, man. That's extremely nice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, I guess the problem with it is, is Kuz and I split everything here, so. If you mean it just for me, I'd probably split it with Kuz anyway, to be honest. If you, no, you, you don't have to do that. If he sends you money for headphones, use it for headphones. But I'm not, I'm not going to – because anything that improves the show is good for me as well. Um, right. It just makes but, you feel bad. No, you don't worry about it. But anyway, Michael, thanks for the generosity, my man. That's nice. Um, if you want to send it to Kuz's corner on Cash App, you can do that as well uh, if you got Cash App because my Cash App's messed up right now. If that's okay with Coos, I didn't even ask. Yeah, and I also have Venmo and PayPal, too. Either way, either one works. It's in there. Um, all, all of it's under Coos's corner. C-O-U-Z-S. I, it's easy to find. I, I appreciate it, brother. <laughs> that's embarrassing, man. But I appreciate it very much. Um, But, yeah, so JoJo, JoJo's the third guy to enter the portal after Creasa and after Seth Wilson. I'm sure there'll probably be more. Uh, I doubt this will be the last one. You know, again, there's a few guys I would like to see him keep. Uh, I'd like to see yeah. Noah Farrakhan stay. I'd love to see, I'd love to see Pat Sumnick stay. I'd like to see Kobe Johnson stay, and even Ofri Nave. I think those four guys could all contribute to this team, and hopefully, they'll all, 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 they will all be able to to stay on board. But you know, time will tell. Uh, yeah. The other. The other I'm topic. Anything else on that topic before you want to before we move on to the coaching situation? I'm with, I just want to. I, I'm with you. I wish Joe Joe the very very best, and I hope we all eat. You know, you heard what I just said about his game. I hope I eat crow. You know, I would be yeah. happy to eat crow on this. I hope he I hope he has an all American season wherever he goes. Uh, you know, just want to put that out there. Yeah. 
And we will touch on – before this show's over, guys, I know I've seen it in the comments a couple times, we will touch on the Calipari situation here before the show's over. That's obviously one of the hottest topics in college basketball right now. Yeah. The, actually, it's the hottest topic in college basketball. We probably should have done Who? a show on it, to be honest. Who? Calipari. Uh, oh, Nate Oates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing we want to discuss on the show tonight is – there seems to be a little bit of, um, I don't know if worry is the right word, concern, I guess, and within the fan base, myself included. Paul and I talked about this off camera earlier yeah. today. A little bit concerned about the coaching staff taking so long to come on board. Uh, DeVries has only hired one coach so far. It's one of his assistants from, from Drake. Two of his assistants he was going to bring on. One has taken the job at Vander, an assistant job at Vanderbilt to work for Mark Byington, who, oh, by the way, has already hired his entire staff. And here DeVries has only got one guy. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. Uh, well, sorry, that threw me back. And then the other one is Marty Richter, who we're going to talk about a little bit more in depth. And he has now become the head coach at South University of South Carolina Upstate. So, you know, he had an opportunity to be a head coach which is what all these guys aspire to do, and he took advantage of it. Before we move on, we've got to acknowledge this super chat by Mr. Michael Dehart. Michael, your generosity is appreciated, my brother. Yeah, that means a lot to me, brother. I appreciate it. You know, uh, I'll make sure it goes to headphones, to new headphones, so I appreciate that. Um, also, before we get too deep into the conversation, we've got to we, – I almost forgot to do this, but we've got to give a shout-out to our sponsor real quick. So, oh, bear yeah. with us for about 40 seconds. We will be back. As Arnold Schwarzenegger likes to say, I'll be back. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com, or you can come in person today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. All righty. Uh, we've got the next topic. Uh, thanks again to Dutch Miller Automotive for sponsoring us here on the channel. Uh, they help us keep the lights on here. Thanks again to the super chat there from Marty Dehart or Michael Dehart. I'm sorry. S. Michael Dehart. Uh, I got the word Marty in my head because the next topic is Marty Richter, who was an assistant coach under Darren DeVries at Drake, was expected to come with him as part of this staff at West Virginia, took the head coaching job at South Carolina Upstate. Paul, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, this one came out of left field for sure. And, and um, you know, just from my sources, uh, this was not expected, honestly. And, and how can you know, you know, this is a D1 job. So it's not like, you know, I mean, even if it was a D2, D3 job, he still may have taken it. I don't know. But it's hard to turn down a head coaching job. It's probably similar money to what he would get here at West Virginia, I'm guessing. Uh, no offense to USC Upstate. Uh I don't know that, but I think, you know, head coaches at that level usually make anywhere between you seen from three to million, three all the way up to a million in some of the bigger mm -hmm. ones. So uh, I, I'm guessing, you know, this was, he liked this, the opportunity there. Um, honestly, don't know what part of the country that's in. Have you looked that up yet, Coos? What? I'm assuming, I mean, it's somewhere in South Carolina, but I don't know where exactly. Right. Spartanburg, South Carolina. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in South Carolina. Yep. Okay, so good recruiting area. Um, probably feels like you can do something with it. But the biggest part of this is this was the part of the staff member that if you didn't, excuse me, get the Drake job, was thought to 100% for sure, be coming with Darren DeVries. And this is his right-hand guy. This is an infrastructure guy. This is a glue guy, you know. and uh, I'm sure it probably there's an impact to be felt here. Uh, I don't know day to day how much 
Richter had, but I've heard that he carried a heavy load. So, um, Darren DeVries probably spent most of his birthday yesterday working. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and, and Mr. Norton at 25 years old is probably going through the, the fire for real, even though he's already, you know, he's already been at, at the D one level. This is a new level and Drake, they didn't reach out to probably 70% of the players that they probably are trying to talk to now. Mm-hmm. Just didn't have a shot, you know? So, Said the US, yep. USC coach upstate made upstate made 100 AK last year. Yeah, that's probably that's about what I was thinking. He would have made more at West Virginia, but uh, you know you can't. Obviously, you take a pay cut to be a head coach uh, for that opportunity if you right. if you like your opportunity. And yep. Richter, you know, you, you know, for all for all intents and for everything I've been told, is just he's a up and coming star. So he's probably going to do well there. Look for them to be in the tournament a couple of years, probably from everybody. I'm just, everybody says he's going to be great. And likely had he been here and DeVries left, that's three or four years from now, there's a good chance he'd have been heavily considered. Uh, wow, guys, you guys are really Dusty, putting into this yeah. today, aren't you? Uh, Dusty DeVries. Uh, thank you for chiming in on X. Uh, thank you for watching. Dusty is the brother of head coach Darren DeVries, but he says coach is good at keeping things in a tight circle. Thanks for that information, Dusty. It's good to know, man, because I ain't alive. I've been sweating it a little bit over here. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. I have no I have no doubt he has a plan, uh, a plan B and a plan C even, but, you know, if other things didn't work out. But, uh, you know, I, it's hard not to – it's sometimes, you, you know, you know how it is to be a fan. You grow impatient sometimes, but. But yeah, right. we're definitely definitely excited to see who he lands. Hopefully, this week we'll hear some news. I'm sure we will, because we do have. You know, I think the recruiting window opens back up next week, if I'm not mistaken, where they can start contacting players again. And of course, we got the portal. Obviously, is hot and heavy too. Um, right. Back to the USC Upstate thing, and then I'll address the super chat. Um, I mean, he's going to be able to get a head coach on his resume, and that means something for these guys, you know. Because we've, no we've heard Rim Baker, we've heard Rim Baker talk about that. The, the, unless you sit in that seat, you don't know, you don't understand what it what it takes to do it. So getting that experience is invaluable, even if it's at a lower level. Uh, Absolutely. Your Val, thank you for the forty nine ninety nine super chat. He says, "I'm with Michael, all for the betterment of the show." Your Val, thank you very much for the support. Thanks everybody for the support. This is you guys are, have been extremely generous today. Couldn't thank you enough, man. Couldn't thank you enough. Couldn't do this without you guys. Matthew Swanson says the recruiting, uh, I guess, the period where they can talk to players opens on the 12th. And then Michael Dehart uh, has a comment for here for Eero Val. Oh, and Pokemon Kid Entertainment, I'm uh, glad to see you're doing better, my man, and that you're out of the hospital. Sorry to, sorry to hear that you were sick. But glad to see you're on the men, my man. Um. Leo Cole says, if DeVries doesn't get his staff together by the end of April, will this hamper his plans for May? Some believe May would be too late. I'm assuming – Here's the deal. Oh, Well, I was just going to say, I, I'm assuming when you say plans, I'm assuming what, what plans are you talking about? It's kind of what – I don't know what specifically, but Paul, you may Probably portal to. plans, but, but yeah, you know, here's what it is. Here's what I've – you know, some of what I've been told, guys. Even if – there's no, we don't know. They they probably already interviewed guys, right? It is my guess. And from what I understand, it's the school that can take long on the hiring process as well. Like there, you know, there's obviously the HR part of it. Um, there, there's a lot that, that has to be done, background, um, and, and stuff like that. And it's a little bit of a process with that. Um, so looking into it later a couple of days ago. Um, there's more to it than just a uh, coach saying, Hey, you're hired and you're hired. Um, you know, especially if these are guys that he's never worked with before or being recommended to him. So, you know, there, there is a process to, to be had here. Um, I don't know how quickly it goes, but I, I will try to find out. But unfortunately, if it's information I'm told I can't share, then I can't share. It. But um, when I can, I will. Um, 
Matthew Swanson says he needs to get his assistance done this week. Hard to sell players to come when they don't know coaches. And I think he will, Matthew, or at least he'll be able to have a conversation with his with his recruits and let them know where his, you know, the portal guys and let them know, hey, here's what our plan is. We've got a plan in place. But if they can even uh, – personally, and I was listening to an episode of Ear Sports uh, Country Roads Confidential earlier today about this same topic, and those guys are also a little bit concerned. Um, but – one more than the other, but they made a great point. I mean, number one, well, two points. Actually, number one, a lot of these guys are at the Final Four this week because that's when a lot of the coaching interviews are done, or at the Final Four. The national title game is here in about, what, 30, 35 minutes. So, yeah, they're probably still there. A lot of these guys are probably still there doing, you know, Coach DeVries may even be there himself doing interviews and whatnot. And also, the second point I wanted to make is this. Maybe this opens the door for some of the – current staff people to keep their job. Maybe right. it's maybe that's plan B or plan C, and, and it ends up being a benefit to some of the guys who were already on the staff, like a Jordan McCabe or a James Dickey or a, you know, Deshaun Butler, who, whoever, just name one, name somebody, you know. Maybe one of those guys gets a job. Matt. You know. West Virginia assistant coach Matt Campbell. <laughs> yeah. That's been so funny seeing those today. I seen a Kentucky head coach Matt Campbell today. Yeah, probably from John Kurtz. Kurtz yeah. yeah, he does that. Yeah. He does that with every job opening, man. Doesn't matter the sport because he loves to troll Iowa State fans. It's so funny. Yeah, and they oh, and they, they can't stand him either. No. Uh, thank you, Dakota Collins, for the four nine nine super sticker, man. We much appreciate your support. He says there it Is went. That a, huh. Uh, Thank you, Dakota. I really appreciate that. Pokemon. I was looking at the picture and I wasn't sure if that was a guy or girl. Oh, you know what I mean. I wasn't okay. sure if it was a guy or girl watching the show. Uh, oh, I got two you. two people in the picture. Oh, okay. And Dakota, Dakota is a gender gender neutral kind of name. Yeah, you can be a guy or a girl. So. And yeah, uh, Tosh is right. Uh, YouTube does take, and I, we're not complaining. I'm, I'm just answering, addressing something in the comments. YouTube, anything that's given on YouTube, whether it's through ad money, super chats, any of that stuff, YouTube gets thirty percent of it. But that's that's right. how YouTube makes their money. So it is what it is. Which, we're, which we're is cool because we are allowed to promote super, yeah. or, uh, you know, the other things to pay through. Oh yeah, you talking about like Venmo and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, but yeah, at I mean, least I, at least YouTube said, doesn't say we can't because that would that would suck. Yes, yeah, so, I mean I, I'm cool. With seventy, if they want to give me seventy percent, I'll take seventy percent. You know, it, it allows right. me to get out here and talk about something I love and, and passionate about. So, look, there's a lot of things about Google I don't like, but as long as they keep sending me paychecks, <laughs> even though they're not very big, as long as they keep sending them to me, I'm happy. Um, right. I get to do something I enjoy on on the side, but uh, and, and Paul does it full time. So, um, Mo, I'm we're sad too, man. Jojo, look, we're hate we hate to see him leave, but I think at the end of the day, this is probably a move that's best for everybody, for both parties, the school and Jojo himself. Wish the yeah. kid nothing, young man, nothing but the best wherever he goes. Uh, don't worry, don't worry about it, Michael. We're cool with however you want to send it, brother. We're not complaining at all. Yeah, whatever um, you want to do, man. It's a lot easier to send it on here. It is. It's a lot easier because it's already there for you. To hit the dollar sign and just boom, it's done. So no, no complaints from completely, me. Completely, completely grateful for what you did, brother. But all of you, um, however, is best. Let's let's talk about this John Calipari Calipari situation. Oh, go ahead. You need to. Oh yeah, drop like button. Great point, Randall, Randall me Savage, and I love that name. Don't forget yeah. to hit the thumbs up button for the show, guys. That's that's something that all of you can do. It's absolutely free. We appreciate you. Um, let's talk about the John Calipari to Arkansas. Boy, who saw that coming? Holy cow. What are your thoughts I on mean, that? I mean, I think some of the writing was on the wall there, but, uh, you know, you would have thought, like, with some of the job openings that were open, heck, even ours. You know, like, I wonder if Ren would have known that it was a possibility. I'm – Listen, I would not trade Coach DeVries for anything. I'm dead serious. But just just out of curiosity, if Ren would have known that Calipari would leave, and maybe Arkansas is just the right fit, the right job, and they're swimming in an IO money. I know that. Um, 
just curious if he could have been had other places, you know, but they, they tried to holler at him while he was walking his dog earlier. Did anybody else see that? I, I, I saw, I saw a video come up on my timeline. I didn't have it. I was in the middle of something. I wasn't able to look at it. <laughs> he, he definitely wasn't trying to holler, you know, but, uh, at the end of the day, he's 65 years old. Uh, I think he's maybe older, 66. But anyway, this is a move that he's in the last leg of his career. I'm pretty sure he knows it. Uh, and and he basically already doubled down at the Kentucky thing and said, listen, I'm sticking with what I've been doing with the young guys. He, think, he thinks it's best how he can change lives. Wow. Uh, and, and so instead of continuing to do that at Kentucky – he, you know, maybe that he had to do that because the NIL situation wasn't as good. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know Arkansas has a ton of money. Walmart. I mean, they've got just Walmart, and that's that's Tyson only Boots. one in Tyson. So uh, it's literally no issue for them. So uh, he's off to Arkansas, one of the more underrated basketball jobs in the country. They've got a national championship that they've won there within the last. 30 years, I think. Uh, anyway, they in that, that team in the 90s they had, uh, which was such a fun team to watch back in the day there. But um, it's a good job, man. I don't know about top 15 like some people are saying, um, but it's a good move for both parties. I think Kentucky is one of those jobs where it doesn't matter who the coach is. It really doesn't. The They're – voice kind of gets old after there's a shelf life to it, right? As mm-hmm. to where other jobs, not as much. Adolph Rupp, you know, he's like one of the only guys that's really ever lasted a long, long time there. They typically move through coaches every six to ten years. So I, I think it was needed on both, ta- both sides. He had begun to really kind of have the Bob Huggins effect there too, although not mm-hmm. to the extent that Hugs did as far as under 500 out of the tournament early kind of things like that. Um, but, but Arkansas will be a good fit for him. He, he fits the culture there a little bit uh, as far as uh, they, they're flashing, you know, and they're going to like him and kind of how he is. Mm-hmm. And, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Agreed. I, I mean, Cal, my understanding, and uh, I was watching the chat as you were talking, Paul. So if I say something, you've already, re- and I, that you've already said, you know, I can't do two things at once, right? So as you were talking, I'm watching the chat. Uh, first off, Val, I apologize if I've ever called you brother or sir. I, I, I'm not sure if I have, but uh, apparently you're a female, so I apologize if I've ever said uh, – I, I never know, so I'm, I'm always skittish on what to say. But uh, I just saw you say that you were a Mountaineer sister. So, any, but anyway. Um, Interesting. Have to remember that. Yeah, ninety six percent of our audience is male, so it's sometimes I just it's, it's easy to assume, you know. So I apologize. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure you're not offended. But uh, anyway, just wanted to put that out there. That's her. Um, that's her and uh, Chris Sisson that I know of. Maybe one or two more. Yeah. Well, and what well, we have a couple guys on here that use their wives' accounts or their daughters' accounts. So yeah. it might be a female name, but it's a guy in the chat room. So, you, you know, you never know. Yep. But anyway, back to the cow thing. It's my understanding he took a pay cut to go to Arkansas. I read. Oh yeah, day. they can't pay him what they were. They were. Or they so paid he was, him that's how unhappy he was. That's how unhappy he was. Uh, I mean, he he just needed to get the hell out. And I think he was under so much pressure there. A lot of the fans were were wanting him out. And. Uh, he just saw an opportunity to go. It's a fresh start for him. It's a fresh start for Kentucky. You know, I think it was a good move for both parties. And Kentucky now doesn't have to pay him a buyout because they didn't fire him. He, I'm sure he has to pay them a little something. But you know, for he, sure. apparently for, for apparently for him, it wasn't a money move. He wants to go somewhere where he whoever can whoever negotiated his contract to deserves a Heisman <laughs> you know, yeah. or whatever. I mean, no buyout. Who, who negotiates that? Does he not have a buyout? I thought he did. No. No, no buyout. At least I read that earlier. Wow. I'm almost sure. 
Dakota Collins, thank you for the another another generous four ninety nine super sticker. We thank you. Thank you, Dakota. Yeah, Mo, that's what we were just talking about. Paul said he heard the same thing that he did not have a buyout to pay to Kentucky for leaving. So Kentucky gets rid of a cow who there's word on the street or, or there's rumblings out there that they really wanted rid of him anyway. They just couldn't afford to fire him. So they get okay. rid of him. They get rid there's of him. There's no buyout for Calipari if he decides to leave Kentucky. Wow. So you just read it. You confirmed it. Awesome. Man, that's crazy. According to the Southwest Times record, the most reputable newspaper in the country. <laughs> are you are you saying I'm, that to be funny or are you being serious? I'm being facetious, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know who the heck that is. The Southwest Times record. That's I mean, come on, you know. Yeah. Um who do you think gets that job? Do you think do you think Scott Drew would consider leaving Baylor? Scott Drew's job? a guy. That's a that's you know he, that's a big name. Nate Oates has got a huge buyout. Uh, can UConn can match anything? They can match it. What do you want to do? I mean, it's almost uh, you could consider you Kentucky uh, uh -huh. a tiny step up from UConn, but on the, based on the last twenty years, not really. UConn's won way more national championship. Excuse me. Oh. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of names out there. You can really just go through the gambit. Mark Few. I mean, just keep just name guys. Doug McDermott. You know, like you can, you can. There are plenty of names that would splash there and do well. But if you want a guy that knows how to win and has won in the best conference in America and has won at what most would consider not a great job um, at for, at the, at the time when he got it, Scott Drew, you know, or maybe Tony Bennett. You got to make the call to Jay Wright. Right. Um, and the thing with Jay Wright is he's 60, right? So he's still, he's still got eight, nine, maybe 10 years if he really wants it. And the, but the other thing about Jay Wright, I remember him, him saying was the thing he loved about Villanova was he still got to live somewhat of an innocuous life. He wasn't, he wasn't known in every thing like Huggins was, or, mm -hmm. you know, like the West Virginia job is you can go, it doesn't matter where you go. Your people know who you are. With Jay Wright in Kentucky, that's not going to be the case. You're going to be known throughout the state, right? right. So you, you become the ambassador of the state, basically. So mm -hmm. may not be the fit there. And then you then you kind of get into, like, would Dusty may consider the Kentucky job now? Like, if they swing and miss on some bigger prospects, would he leave Michigan or, you know, now that he's kind of settled in? That's way down the list and probably not likely to happen. And then Billy Donovan is the last name that I would look to for that. I mean, he, he's an all-time great college basketball coach, and he would win immediately there. They would, he would crush it. He would absolutely but crush it. But you think he's – I wonder if he's willing to leave the NBA. I mean, it's it's gotten out of where coaching it's, in it's, college is probably more difficult because you've got to recruit. You've got to retain your talent. You've got to deal with NIL, transfers all the time. With the NBA, you have a GM that does all that for you. All you have to do is coach right. ball, you know. Well, you can hire one in Kentucky. You can do – that's true. Whatever amenity you want at Kentucky, you can have. You know, do you want a GM? Do you want two GMs? You can have it. Uh, you can make all five of your staff member GMs, and you just coach ball. <laughs> you know, no, yeah. like it doesn't matter there. So, I mean, in Kentucky is one of the only college programs in America you can say it's, it's all prestige with any basketball job in me or otherwise, right? So, it's Kentucky. You know, it's literally the job. It's the yeah. job. So, right. Uh, some would say North Carolina, some would say Kentucky, some would say UCLA, but it's one of five, right? Oh yeah, for, that for sure. that people people look to and say, yeah, that's the it's, best job in America. It's it's it, it's like uh, it would be like Alabama or Notre Dame or Texas, right. yeah, you know, one it's of those schools in, in football. Uh, but but better, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. The Yates twenty seven with a dollar nine nine super chat. He says Jerry Jones played for Alabama for Arkansas. Yeah, that's yeah he did another one. If you know, I'm not sure how much money they give to the athletic department, but it's probably a lot. I would imagine. What about Clinton? Yeah, I'm not sure about that <laughs> either. Clinton. You know, you never know. Bill Clinton. Dakota well, Bill Collins Clinton. says you know. my donation message thing isn't working. La Mayo done tried it like ten times. I got to send stickers. Well, D Dakota buddy, if you send stickers. 
we will try our best to hunt your comments out and, and make sure you we read them, my man. It's not yep. working for you. But what were you saying, Paul? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, nothing, nothing major. Nothing major. I don't. I can't remember to be honest, buddy. I was waiting for somebody to say it. Bill Sheets. He says Huggins to Kentucky. <laughs> that would listen. They'd have to swing and miss on everybody for that to happen. Not that I think. I think Huggins, if he got the job, would kill it. I honestly do. I, I think he. You know. I mean, he's 70, 71, but do I think if he, if you gave him three, four years, I think Chuggins would probably win a national championship. I really think he could there. Uh, anybody can there, you know? Uh, all you, if there's one thing I know about Bob Huggins is if you give him the, the money, I, I do believe he can build a good, you know, if you give him the guys he wants, he can win, you know, especially if they're elite guys like he had at Kansas State. He had, you know, he was there one year. They had one of the best recruiting classes in the country, and he made that thing work. You Michael know? Beasley and Bill Walker, two NBA players, two West Virginia guys. That's what kills me about it. The trend is younger coaches. Yeah, Val, that's that's what I was actually. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh, that's a great point. You know, Beeline, Huggins, all these guys. You know, the, even Billy Donovan. I don't know how old Billy Donovan is now, but. He's got to be getting up there, right? He's been doing 50s. it a long time. He's probably in his fifties, maybe sixty. But I, I'm like I'm like you, Val. I think they're probably going to lean towards a younger coach. You know, I think if Scott Drew would be young enough to fall, you know, somebody in their fifties. Oh, he's 50s. only fifty-eight. Billy Donovan's fifty-eight, oh, he's, so oh, he's yeah, right there. Yeah, he's been doing it a long time to be fifty-eight. So yeah, yeah, I mean, Billy Donovan would be young enough. It, again, if he wants to come back to college, it seems like most of these guys once they get to the NBA, they don't want to come back come back to college unless they just have to. But I think Bill Donald right. would do well in the NBA, isn't he? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, he has been for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's it's been on and off, but now he is definitely doing well. DJ, thank you for the Dada 99 Super Chat. Thank you for the support. If you want to throw a chat or a comment down in the chat box or the comment section, we'll, we'll be sure to read it. Krista says, what about Nate Oates? Yeah, Nate Oates is definitely on the list, Krista. You know, obviously he's coaching, uh, you know, he, he just led Alabama to the Final Four. But his buyout, like you, like Curtis just put in the comment, his buyout is so massive, I'm not sure, uh, you know. There are some potato smoke as well, Coombs, by the way. Yeah, I've seen that. I saw that today on social media. Could you we know, see Rick Pitino go back, go back to That would be something else, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's just, you know, he it's funny how people don't mention his age when they talk about him. Uh and I think it's because he's like a Pete Carroll type, right? He doesn't look his age. Mm -hmm. Seven he's seventy one, you know, and a lot of people forget that about him because he's so vibrant. And Pete Carroll was the same way. Pete Carroll was seventy two years old, sprinting, throwing balls. And he's just young, loves life. Uh, and, and similarly, so is that, you know, so is Patino. So, but yeah, uh, I have no doubt that he would do well. And, you know, Dan Hurley's name keeps coming up. I, golly, it'd be tough There's to leave. Just, a, I mean, uh, it'd be tough to leave a school like UConn, who, who's just now, you know, playing in their second straight national title game, could win two back to back national titles, would be the first team to do that in a long time. And, and Hurley's from that part of the country, too. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't count it out, but uh, man, I, I kind of hate it for UConn right now because I just don't know, this, see what this, the benefit this could be is. A, this could be a distraction for them a little bit going into this game tonight. Hopefully, it's not, but it could be. I just, you know, with this situation with Hurley, it, it really is basically a lateral move, all things considered. You know, like first of all, you're having to rebuild at Kentucky at UConn. You've got it rolling. Uh, why give that up? You know. You're about to win back to back, possibly national championship. How much better can you do? It's not like there's an improvement to be made from jumping to UConn to Kentucky. It's mm -hmm. not like the, it's not like the antithesis of this to where if he was at Kentucky and the UConn job opened up and it's been doing like it's been doing, then UK's been doing like they've been doing. You know, you go to UConn and you're you're all of a sudden you're coaching a team that's been the that back to back championship games. No. <laughs> you know, you're going to Kentucky for the rebuild. If you like challenges, there you go. 
uh, Matthew Swanson thinks he'll use it as leverage. And I saw somebody else earlier in the chat put, uh, I guess, Craig Smoke talked about this on 365 Sports today. You know, they're obviously connected to Baylor. And so far, they've not heard any any confirmation about about Drew being interested in the job. Uh, but they think he could be, you know, his agent, agent could be using it as leverage. But they don't know, you know, they don't know of him being interested in the job. I'll be anxious to go back and listen uh, to the replay of that later on if I can. You wonder, uh, I don't know if anybody else remembers this, but uh, in 2021, when Bailey won the national championship game, who was the chairman of the NCAA committee? <laughs> Barnhart, the Kentucky athletic director. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and so they've been kind of pals since then, obviously. I got you. you know, so there's yeah. a small connection if you're going to look for one. Chance says, watch Coach K get the job. <laughs> I think Coach K's pretty happy being retired, if I had to guess. Yeah. DJ says possible UK recruiting violations and sanctions. Uh, I haven't heard anything about that, DJ, I, I, and I don't want to make that assumption. But uh, Oh, Bruce Pearl's the other name you hear a lot. Yeah. Have you heard anything about any UK recruiting violations or sanctions, Paul? No, but uh, – but that's always something that comes up when a coach leaves, especially unexpectedly like this, because right. the the violations stay with Kentucky. They don't move with the coach. Right. Right. So right. that's all. That's it. Always moves. Up. That's always something people speculate on. Um, I, I would say, let's give. I'll have to look into it tomorrow. It's just not been on my radar because I'm not a right. UK guy, but I, I do live five minutes from Kentucky. Literally, I go down the road. I pull out of my driveway and go down this way, this way, five minutes. And I'm right in Nashville, Kentucky. Well, you know, Coons. I do. Uh, Crystal s says they're surprised Shaka Smart statement hasn't come up. You know, that's that's a good name. I hadn't, I'm surprised it, too. It's on this, yeah, it's on this list I'm looking at right here, Is actually. It? Yeah. Where, where'd you get that list? The Athletic. So you can read it. Okay. Calvin Sampson. Oh, yeah. There's a great duh. I'll pull it up right now. Calvin Sampson. Yep. I will pull so this I, up. So, if you go in order, what's it going to be? Probably Billy Donovan is the top, top, top choice. Then after that, you go to probably Drew. Then from there, you go to Probably Hurley. I don't know. You know, it's because uh, it's like that's probably my top three. Uh, and, and then like if if you got a shot at like uh, Joe Missoula, you know, I mean, he would be up there. Young. Uh, which or what's the title of that article? Because there's several different articles about Calipari on here, and I don't know which one to click on. Oh, the one I have is called. Uh, Kentucky basketball coaching candidates list: Nate Oates, Rick Pitino, or Scott Drew. Oh yeah, I don't even see that on here. I'm about to search for it. Kentucky it's basketball good. coach coaching coaches candidate. coaching candidates list. List: Oates, Pitino, or Drew. Here we go. Chaz, yeah, that, right. I think he would have been great here. I would, he'd have been a good fit in West Virginia. John Calipari was one of the two highest-paid coaches in the country. Money should not be an issue for anything. But then there was 22. Very public spat between Calipari and athletic director Mitch Barnhart regarding the need for a practice facility. I remember when all that happened, uh, actually. But here are the names on the on the list. Some of them we've already mentioned. Billy Donovan from the Chicago Bulls. Scott Drew at Baylor. Sean Miller from Xavier. Nate Oates at Alabama. Bruce Pearl from Auburn. Rick Pitino. From St. John's, Mark Pope. That's a name right there. He's a Kentucky graduate. Mark Pope at BYU. That's a name to keep an eye on, in my opinion. Kelvin Sampson, Shaka Smart. And athletic, uh, the writer at The Athletic thinks that Donovan is the pie in the sky option. And you have to at least contact Scott Drew and maybe even Dan Hurley, although the odds are zero, basically zero. Uh, BPA 1985 just said that uh, 
uh, a perm, a NATO, NATO a statement of permit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by this message from the Dusty Debris. That's okay. Uh, well, Zula, they say, doesn't like recruiting. He, I don't think he does, Chaz. I think that's why he likes the NBA. I think you're exactly right. And he seems to be perfect for the NBA. He's doing well there, so. Yeah, I don't know why Shaka didn't make it at Texas, Chaz. Texas, it takes a special type of coach to win there. It's just the culture is so different there, I think, and there's so much pressure there from donors and, and to win. Uh, and I'm not sure every coach handles that well, you know, and maybe Chaka's style of coaching just didn't work well in the in the Big 12. I don't know. That's just a guess. I'm not sure why it wouldn't, uh, but I'm just throwing that out there as a hypothetical. I can't get Roman Reigns theme music out of my head. <laughs> I know that's random, but it's all right. Um, so who does everyone have UConn or Purdue? I've got UConn myself. I think they're just too talented all across the board. But I think it'll be a yep. uh, think it'll be a good game though. What, what do you think, Paul? Zach, you, uh, I think Zach Eady is a big wild card in this game. Uh, he still would be the best player on the floor, in my opinion, even though he's a big UConn big guy. Right. He's just such a mismatch. Uh, you know. They're two very similarly built teams with really good guard play uh, and bigs, you know. So I just think it's all about look at the foul trouble. Who who gets who in foul trouble first? Uh, and then for me, it's who, who makes threes because these two these teams are both paint scoring teams. So the team that decides, you know what, I'm going to trade threes for twos, may be a team that pulls away in this. Mm -hmm. Uh. It's Michael D. Hart. Thanks for coming down to Purdue's a turnover margin. How many times Purdue turns it over? Uh, Matt Painter's another it, big guy people ain't mentioned yeah, yet. True. He'd be I great for the job. It's rare, though, that Zach Eady plays against anybody that's close to his size, and tonight he's going to. So that might might throw him off his game a little, but we'll see. Well, he's just so great at get, getting the foul call, you know, and he's 7 4. So it's like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's close to his size, but it's still we we've seen big strong guys give him problems. We saw Jimmy Bell give him yep. some issues. Yep. Uh you I know, and it Ritchie takes State somebody like DJ that. Burns. I thought DJ Burns would give him more of a fit than he did, to be honest. He's the no, no, it's completely he's not really he's a he's more of a finesse player than you would realize for his size, you know. Yeah. That, but I heard that they're looking at him on the football field. They're going to at least throw him on the football field and see what it looks like. Yeah, he's, he's been going to spring practice. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, imagine Chaz he's probably Patino. turned out like Jimmy Bell did. Yeah. Chaz Patino. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's who I was talking about was Jimmy Bell. My fault. But you're talking about DJ Burns. Interesting. I didn't know that about DJ Burns. Um, Chaz, uh, we, Patino is on the list. He, the Athletic put out an article about it, and he's, he's on their list of – I guess candidates. You just make the list. And uh, oh yeah, Kim Caldwell, the Marshall women's coach, leaving to go to Tennessee. Paul, what are your thoughts on that? Before it's a great job. It's a great job by her and what she did. The Marshall people are extremely salty, uh, boarding on delusional. Uh, you know, I get it, man. You don't get anything nice very often. You, you went from what you had to her, and it's just night and day. Sorry. Uh, but he he ain't his brother, you know. Dan Tony was he, he was the NBA coach for a reason. Uh, it, it, at the end of the day, man, she, you know, I think it's fair to say, should we have hired Kim Stevens at this point? I think it's a fair question. I think Mark Kellogg did an amazing job, and had, and, and it's almost like splitting hairs, right? But being that she is from the state, Fairmont, mm -hmm. you know, this probably would have been the dream job for her. Um, Actually, would she take the Tennessee job? I think she's originally from Parkersburg, but she coached at Fairmont, yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you, you just, it just you know, because Mark Kellogg, is there any guarantee that he won't jump? No. Because she damn sure ain't going to leave Tennessee for West Virginia now. Probably not. Uh, never maybe know. she Almost would. Old. Well, I know, but Tennessee – 
Tennessee's like you, Kentucky in women's basketball, you know. I get it. So it, it's it's totally the best three jobs in the country. You know, I, I, anyway, it's not about us. It's about her, and, and I'm glad she got it, you know, from yeah. Glenville to Tennessee in two years. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I apologize. I said Fairmont. It was Glenville she coached at, but which is it's still it's still up in that part of the state. So I wasn't that far off. Listen, man, there's something to that Glenville connection. <laughs> Apparently, Rich Rodriguez. You going to watch this national championship game? I guess we are, brother. DJ, thank you for the super sticker, man. Uh, we're going to jump off of here. It's time for the national title game to start here in just a few. We want to get on and try to get this show knocked out. Give you guys our thoughts on the latest transfer portal news and coaching news for West Virginia basketball and obviously talk about the John Calipari situation. So, uh, and, and, and a few other things. Thank you all who donated tonight. Uh, it means so much to us. You, you wouldn't imagine. Thank you for everybody who hit the like button. Uh, please don't forget on your way out. If you haven't yet to hit that like button, if you're watching this on the replay, like comment, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't yet, we cover West Virginia basketball throughout the year, not just during the season. So this is your go-to channel for West Virginia basketball. Paul, any parting words for the folks out there? Yeah, a few. DJ, man, you you donated three times tonight, man. I just want to say thank you very much for that. Um, yep. If I didn't say thank you before now, I apologize. It's easy to get sidetracked on doing these shows when you're on camera. So um, I, I do really am. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean not to acknowledge any of your donations before. So uh, just wanted to throw that out there. The H27, same for you. Thank you for your super chat. Dakota Collins, thank you for all you did. And then Ear Val, honey, thank you. Uh, and S. Michael Dayhart, thank you guys. I really do appreciate that. Um, it means a lot, man. You know, to have the, it's really, it's not the money, it's the support, you know, uh, for me anyway. It's just, mm -hmm. uh, we, we really appreciate y'all. So we'll come back here this week. We'll be back, you know, if anything happens, uh, We'll be back this week. We will. Thanks again, everybody, uh, for your support. And we will be back. But for tonight, we're done.